What's up, guys? I'm Joss again, and you're listening to the Online Prosperity Show with myself and Prosper. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity TV Show. And today we've got none other than Joss. Joss, how are you doing today? Brother, I am good, and that is one warm welcome. How are you today? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. You know, when you're talking to the marketing consultants for forward thinking leaders, how else can we welcome somebody like that? Oh man, I love it. It's good stuff. Great. All right. So Josh, you, you hold a very big portfolio and I've been trying to track you down ever since I knew about you. And the day I took some information off your Facebook page, which later on resulted in me getting the OBS system. Now I can um, do Facebook Lives, courtesy of you. Thank you about that. There you that. go, man. All the fun <laughs> stuff. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You seem to be a jovial person and you know your things. We want to know what you know. Because I try to keep things very simple. I come from a sales background. Everything, can, everything in marketing comes down to getting a result. And generally that result is having a transaction take place. So give you a bit of background on how I got into the online space. I was working in education marketing, we're doing a lot of promotional work where we'd run national teams of staff, all that fun stuff. But when I started in education marketing, the average sale, that, sorry, what they considered to be a brilliant day on sales for that company was like five, five a day. That's like the best people were doing. The time I finished, if we weren't getting 35 as a minimum, it was a crappy day for me. So, <laughs> Anyway, from that from that, that point, I was recruited to another company. They head under to me, asked me to come work for them. Obvious reasons. That point, I decided I didn't want to work outside anymore, man. Like, it's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, that's half the truth. But there, um, so we got into digital marketing. We worked out how can you get the same leads, so speaking the same people, but more qualified people. So, obviously, other people who were working in that space with me at the time were wondering, how is this guy doing it? What is he doing that's different to us? And how is he not out there and walking the street all the time? Okay, well, this is what we're doing. That kind of, that kind of what sprung board my career in digital marketing. Um, from there, all the lessons along the way, learning how to actually deal with clients, grow a business, how to actually do marketing in a more methodical manner. But again, everything comes down to what is the end result you're trying to reach? What are people, who are you trying to speak to? And how do you get them to that how do you bridge that gap between them not knowing you to them knowing, liking, trusting enough to buy from you? Great stuff. All right. So just, you did start off from a sales background. Okay. That's it. And which is where a lot of the listeners would probably be in, but they don't know how to actually make the leap into what you now do, which is now, you know, advanced digital marketing that just helps, you know, uh, forward thinking leaders, to identify who their ideal clients are. What sort of, um, did you have a person or did you have anything that you read that helped you trigger or make that transition? Or I'd say it's a combination of a few things. Right. Classic book, so you, uh, Breakthrough Advertising, Eugene Schwartz. If, you haven't, if you're going into any sort of marketing, make sure you read that book. Right. Scientific Advertising, Claude Hopkins. Mm-hmm. Like if, you, if, you, if all you read in this your whole life are those two books for marketing sales you'll be set great stuff <clears throat> we're going to put the links to those books at, at the bottom there so okay. you are running now what is now a digital marketing agency what sort of decisions do you have to make every single day that any normal person doesn't do who is not in the position that you are in right now welcome the morning we can review our campaigns see where they're all at right and then we're obviously speaking to clients like most of my day is spent speaking to people and um, communicating with the clients and actually seeing where the campaigns are at. Some people would not know what it entails to actually run a digital marketing agency. So they might just think that all they're doing is, you know, doing Facebook ads or helping people to increase their numbers on Instagram. So, you know, as okay, running an agency, there's really three parts, three main parts of what you're doing. Right. How do you get clients? Mm -hmm. How do you serve those clients? And how do you increase their lifetime value for yourself and your company? Okay. So how do you keep retention go high? All right. So getting clients, there's a million ways to get clients. Knock on doors, you can go do your own advertising. You can put an offer out to your Facebook people. You can do SEO. There's a million different ways to reach clients. It just depends where your core strengths are 
if you don't have a strength already developed, what mark are you trying to reach? And right. Where is the best, most effective way to reach them? Same approach you use for your own clientele. Um, servicing clients, that's a pretty simple one. If you've got skill, you should be selling that. Right. If you don't have a skill yet, do not sell to clients. There's so many people in the digital marketing space that don't have any skills developed. You shouldn't be selling something you don't have. I'm sorry. A lot of people tell you otherwise. Develop a skill, at least to a reasonable level. There's plenty of training. Like if you're learning AdWords, I highly recommend go up in there with Mike Rhodes and Terry Marshall. So if you do Mike, it's PPC Savvy. Um, and like I said, those cl- classic books is where you learn the most of your knowledge from. And then tactical stuff, there's, there's information everywhere. There's a million ways you can learn from. I'm sure Prosper might even have something himself he can show you guys as well. <laughs> Great stuff. So <clears throat> what other, I see you are recommending some few resources. What few resources have you got yourself that maybe somebody watching here and might be, you know, interested in getting to know a little bit of, about how you run your business and, you know, getting in touch with you somehow? Okay. I don't necessarily market to digital marketers myself. There are a few resources on my website that are open to everyone. I think there's like a five-step process that we use. So in any sort of marketing situation, there's five kind of phases you go through from your research through to actually scaling your traffic up. And that can be online or offline. Okay, phase one is your research. So you need to make sure you know your market in depth. In depth. So you gain an in-depth understanding of the product and your target market. So who they are, what they think about, what concerns they have, where they live, how much income they have. You need to know them better than they know themselves. So there's an old saying that goes along the lines of this. If you can describe your market's problem to them better than they can, they immediately position you as the expert and they'll come for you for advice in a situation. Even if you don't actually have the solution for it, they assume that you don't have the answers for them. So once we know who the market is, we start to map the sales process. So if you know who they are, we need to work out where they're trying to get to. So that's the sale. That's, let's just assume we would make a sale via a phone conversation. How do we get them to that phone conversation? So you need to have them know, like, and trust you. And how do you get them to know, like, and trust you? So depending on the sophistication of your market and depending on where your market hangs at is what bridges that gap. So whether it be a series of videos inviting them to go back to phone call with you or whether it be a webinar or maybe it's a simple landing page, like you go straight to landing page and straight to phone call. That'll all depend on how competitive your market's market is and who you're trying to reach. And finally, that last step of where you actually reach them is dependent on who your market is. So if your market hangs out on Facebook most of the time, it's where the most amiable to your message, that's where you market at. If they are person who's literally just had their plumbing explode, they're generally going to search Google. You don't, you don't go on Facebook and say, hey guys, my plumbers, <laughs> plumbing's all over the place. Waiting for an ad. <laughs> plumber, no, right no. <laughs> Emergency plumber, where are you? Cool. <laughs> Great. So, 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 so these five steps, um, you, you're going to provide them to us. I will put the link uh, to these five steps so that you two can have um, you know, a gander of what Joss is talking about here. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, the people that we're talking to here, Joss, are people that are really starting and they're probably nervous and they're not really sure how to step into this whole scene. What sort of advice would you give to somebody who's getting into digital marketing for the first time? You know, what, what sort of motivation would you give them? Honestly, if you're good, or if you apply, it doesn't take a lot to be good. Like, most people don't study. So become good, get one or two clients and give them results. If you can do that, people will start coming to you. And because you're actually delivering, delivering your service, you put your miles ahead of everyone else in the game. Right. Okay. So obviously be good at what you're doing and then start delivering results. Right. And, you know, market to the people um, that are... Um, you know, like, know, like, and trust you already. And you've got to create that. Great. Now, yeah, obviously the digital marketing space is always constantly evolving. What are you doing um, yourself to keep on top of the situation so that you're on the cutting edge of what's relevant and what's happening uh, and keeping, you know, your forward thinking leaders, you know. In terms of what's actually changed, you're saying that the market is changing and evolving. I agree. Yeah. But in terms of your business, what have you actually had to change as a result of the, cha- of the shifts? Like, sure, there's subtle changes within the platform and you need to understand the algorithm shifts. Yeah. There's still 
in terms of traditional traffic, you've got three main sources, your SEO, so your organic sources, that's with that social media, obviously that you're incorporating that kind of stuff now. So that's is broad range there. Right. But Facebook is a major traffic source, which now has incorporated the other kind of things like Instagram, et cetera, but you're still mostly on target people on Facebook. You have AdWords. If you know those two, you're pretty good. All you need to do is stay inside their rules. So terms of service, make sure you read their terms of service. Most people don't. <laughs> hey, we will keep you up. Play, play by the rules. And then it's basic marketing. How do people think? What's the psychology behind your marketplace? You're right. Because obviously if you've got the same message and the market, the media might just change. And so there's not a lot that would change. You're right. Media about. changes. Like if, if you see a drop in sales and you've got a new medium coming and you've been advertising on TV and you realize, Hey, all my people are going to Facebook now. The attention has shifted. Then you change. Yeah. You, got, you, look, you, look, you look for it, but it's not moving as that fast. Like if you understand marketing, you can make the shift quite easily. Like I know that VR or augmented reality will come up at some point soon. And with that shift in, in attention, we'll see a shift to advertising dollars being spent there. So we know that that's something is going to come board, but there's no point in me putting all my focus there right now because the attention right now is still on most of my clients are on Facebook or on AdWords. I would like to thank you so much for this episode today. It's been one of the most insightful ones. And thank you also for those five steps um, you, that um, you know, you, you've afforded us and the people that are listening right now. Now, if somebody might have caught a nugget or really is interested in you know, getting to be in touch with you, um, maybe after watching this episode, how can they get a hold of you, Josh? Two ways. Facebook, um, forward slash I'm Josh Gear. I think it's the same tag across all my platforms. And my website, I am Josh Great stuff. Well, thank you so much for taking your time today. And hopefully, you're going to enjoy the rest of your afternoon. You do, brother. Enjoy. Hope your audience has a great day and have fun. Great stuff. Well, you've been watching an episode of the Online Prosperity Show, and we had Joss, who is a marketing consultant for Forward Thinking Leaders. Hopefully, you got a thing or two from his uh, speech. And also, we're going to put in the five steps at the bottom uh, so that you too can um, you know, know the five steps that you need to uh, conquer the sales world and the sales process. Josh, just thank you so much there.